Hey everyone, welcome to Hustle is for Life Motivation. I am Talal, your host, and my goal as always is to serve you guys by bringing on absolutely amazing guests who are doing awesome stuff around the world by adding value to others. Today, I'm joined by somebody who is, is the founder of Training Camp for the Soul. Um, she is recognized as a self-love expert. She has worked a lot with self subconscious programming, uh, the mind and body psychology, and she is also work with uh, hypnosis, uh, NLP, which is neuro linguistic programming. I can't even talk. Um, she has worked with some really uh, big, you know, names in the spiritual space uh, and tail places in the field of wellness and self development, including Deepak Chopra. She has worked with everybody from the fitness industry to people who are struggling in their love life to people who are entrepreneurs and she helps everybody and her goal is really simple. She wants to help people accelerate their lives. And that's why she's here because this channel is all about how you can upgrade your life and take it to the next level. So with that, please help me welcome Annette Perry to the show. Annette, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Talal. It's a pleasure. Pleasure to serve your audience. Well, I'm really glad to have you here. I think this is going to be an absolutely amazing conversation. Um, to start off, can you please tell us uh, a little bit about yourself. How did you get started? And um, we we just want to know a little bit more about your journey. Yeah. So I'm a transformational coach, and I'd say it's something that I've always had the gifted ability to. I had friends coming to me when I was in high school, and uh, wanting my guidance and wisdom. And so something that I always loved supporting people in, but never really had the uh, the, the, the courage to step into in a sense of, I, I didn't feel that I was really happy in my life. Um, so I'm, I'm 38 now, but I embarked on the self-development journey when I was 25 and spent about 10 years of it, uh, focusing on me, getting myself to a place where my life actually looked transformed. It was a little frustrating that it took that long, as I'm sure it is for some people listening on here, I'm sure have embarked in different ways in developing themselves, but still seem to have their life show up with the same limitations, the same patterns, the same old shit. <laughs> and so for me, it was, a, it was an integrity thing for me that until I knew that uh, I was really happy with my life or that my life looked as a creation of what I wanted, as opposed to me living in survival of things that I no longer want, uh, I, I wasn't willing to start to serve others in that way. So, you know, 10 years of developing myself, trying different modalities, working with different mentors was really great in a sense of developing me as a coach, but frustrating in the sense of experiencing a transformed life. Uh, the good news is that I never gave up and I did finally delve into the, the deepest work of body, mind, psychology, energetics, uh, emotional release work, trauma release work, subconscious reprogramming. And these were some of the tools that actually gave me lasting transformation. And it was at that point about three years ago that I knew that, okay, I'm ready now to support others. So it doesn't take them 10 years, <laughs> it takes them six months. And they have the tools to continue to create in their life moving forward. That's awesome. So, Annette, you talked about the fact that, you know, even in high school, you were actually helping your friends. So it looks like you were, you, you had the makings of a coach, a transformational coach from a very, very young age. So, yeah. you know, tell us a little bit about what it was like advising your friends in high school and how's that different to when you're working with clients right now? Oh my gosh. I have no idea what I said back then. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and listen to it I'd be like oh geez what are you saying don't say that um, so it, it wasn't like any kind of tool or technique it was just like an inner wisdom that I had that always created for my friends a peace of mind that they couldn't give themselves mm. so I had the ability to give them peace of mind with whatever was coming out of my mouth <laughs> um, which was better than whatever they were thinking at that age so today I'm sure it'd be a little different 
if I heard myself saying that. But it was, yeah, it was just tapping into this natural gift that I had. I think a lot of times if people are like not sure what their purpose is in life, I always say to them, well, what are you naturally doing or gifted at or just mm. able to do whether you get paid for it or not? It's just something that comes really natural to you. It's your zone of genius. Chances are it's something there that yeah. is your, your dharma, your purpose. For me, it was always there. So it's like I, I couldn't even stop myself. Even in the 10 years that I was developing myself, I, um, I, I of course, was still supporting and coaching others, but never taking them on as clients, more mm. whatever, whatever company I was uh, uh, working with in, in these positions. So it's something that you just I can't help it. It's just who I am. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely love that because, you know, you realize that this is something that you're passionate about. This is something that you want to do and, and you pursued it. You went all in um, and here you are. I mean, this is something we talked about just before we started recording that a lot of the guests that I've had on the show, they talk about the fact that they discovered their life's purpose or their passion or their mission by actually just trying to fix their own pain, like the, the problems that they're having with their own life, they were just trying to fix that. And in the process, they discovered something that they then wanted to share with the world. Was that, was that something that, that you could relate to, that uh, you, you discovered this by actually just trying to go through and, and uh, transform yourself? Yeah, um, y yes and no. So in a sense, right, this was something that I was always good at and passionate about and I actually wanted to major in psychology in college but I didn't want to go through eight years of schooling <laughs> and so I, I followed my father's footsteps instead and did business and finance but you know the burning desire and passion still circled back and um uh delving into self-development was first for me so even though I had the desire, I did want to transform my relationship with my mother and I wanted to find love. Mm. I wanted to be in a healthy, loving relationship with a man. And that took years. I'm finally there. <laughs> in my life. Awesome. Meeting awesome. for Hawaii tomorrow together. Um, but so to me, that was my, my mess. You know, they say your mess becomes your message. Mm, I love it. And, and uh, helping men and women find love now and self-love, like really getting that if you want to find love out there, it really starts with, uh, with loving all parts of yourself. So really working with uh, men and women on the journey to love, the journey through, you know, how, how to um, go from failing at dating to finding a relationship that lasts and deepens over time. Uh, so that's, that was something that I feel kept me continuing to develop myself for years was that pain point. Mm. So, uh, and even three years ago, um, I had transformed a lot in my life and healed a lot, but I still didn't have this area down um, supporting men and women who are failing at dating. And so again, always an avid learner myself. I never stopped and was committed to having it all. And I think that's part of my message to everyone else. Like get that, like, it's up to you. No one's just gonna give it to you. So if you want something like you have to stay committed to it. And I was committed to it and being on the other side of it now, being in an amazing relationship with an embodied man who adores me and shows up consistently for me is something that I want for every woman and an experience that I want for every man to have mm. being able to be that for their for their woman as well um yeah so yes I definitely you can say to answer your original question um it it, 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 it circled back to that more and more so, but it was always there. Awesome. I love it. And, and again, the passion is there. I, I can feel it. It's jumping out of the screen and punching me in the face. And I love it. I absolutely love it. So, Anna, 
you talk about the fact that you, it took you 10 years to achieve this transformation. What kept you going? Because for most people, they'll just give up. Um, love. The desire for love. Mm. I think it's one of the biggest pain points for people. We don't want to end up alone. We don't, you know, we want someone to share our love with, which is why I think you see a lot of relationship coaches out there or a lot of people that are willing to spend money to get advice in this area. Mm. Because, you know, we, we want someone to share our heart with. So I say for me, it was a lot of times that, a lot of times digging to uncover what's in my way of love is what kept me going. And the passion that I had for uh, helping others as a coach, like for becoming a, a coach and a healer and facilitator. So, and how much enjoyment I got from supporting others. So mm. in those 10 years, I didn't have my own business, but I worked with different organizations and different mentors. And so I was coaching. I coached hundreds of people inside of someone else's organization. And the, the fulfillment that you get from seeing that you had an impact on someone, someone's life being transformed and then feeling free and feeling peace of mind uh, was just something that became addicted to. <laughs> so uh, I'd say both those things. Wonderful. Um, I, I have to ask you this question because, you know, it, it's just incredible. The way, the way you're talking about it, the, the passion behind, uh, you know, your, your, your speech is, is just so real. I have to ask you, how do you define love? What's the definition of love? Uh, to me, love is a vibration. Love mm. is something you come to the dance floor with, not something that you seek. So, for example, if we went salsa dancing, it's a salsa club and you've never salsa danced before in your life and you just and you see someone and they got moves and like, oh that person has it kind of like you see someone and you're like that's the one that's gonna love like that i want to be in a relationship where he's hot yeah. or I'm love with them and you went out and you started dancing with this person they might dance with you for 30 seconds a minute but then they'd realize this person doesn't even like have rhythm with music. Like this is too much work on me. This is weighing so much on me. This is frustrating. I'm not here to teach them. I just want to have fun. Mm. And so I find that that's the way that a lot of people approach love is they think that someone is going to love them. Like someone's mm -hmm. going to teach you how to dance salsa when they're not a salsa teacher. They're just there to have fun and enjoy. Yeah. So the, the responsibility of the self is the self love is the um doing enough on your own to learn the moves to learn the rhythm to embody love mm. that you come to the dance floor you don't have to be the best but you got to be confident that you embody it and that you're there to share to exchange in it to be in a dance with it so to me love is a dance it's a giving and a receiving it's, it's an embodying and a sharing. That is such a powerful and, and amazing definition. I can't even, I can't, I can't, you know, just begin to describe you know, how I'm feeling. I'm getting chills. I've never, I've never had anybody describe it to me that way. I love the analogy of the salsa dancing. Although if you take me to a salsa dance class, you're going to see a talal shaped hole in the wall. Um, but apart from that, I love the analogy. It's so powerful. Seriously, I'm getting chills right now. I, I absolutely yeah. love it. But it, it totally makes sense when you break it down like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And a lot of times, you know, it's a journey for us to learn that. Mm. A lot of, you know, and I was in a lot of dysfunctional relationships. They weren't abusive, but they were codependent. Mm. They were, I don't, you know, I don't love myself. I don't know how to dance, but maybe you can give me that. Mm. It wasn't, it wasn't love. It was a taking. And I, I, I learned this the hard way. That's why I'm an expert in it. Cause I've been through it in so many shapes and angles for, you know, 20 something years. I only met my my partner about 10 months ago. Oh, wow. It was worth it. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. And no regrets. I mean, he'll say to me, why didn't we meet three years ago? I'm like, because I wasn't ready. <laughs> yeah, that it's like anytime I talk to anyone about love, uh, I I can guide them. I can identify mm. what really in their way. Of yeah. Experiencing love, of being in love. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I have to ask you, Anna, though, um, for people who are sitting there and kind of wondering, well, that sounds absolutely fantastic. You know what? I, I, want, I want to take those steps. I want to get there. So how can they get started? What are the steps they need to be taking in order to you know, develop the self-love? Yeah, great. Great question. That's part of what I guide people through. That is my work. And uh, you know, it starts with uncovering what, uh, what is there, what's in your garden. What's the script? What did you learn that love is? I mean, who were the first people to love you? Yeah, your parents. Your parents, right? Yeah. And so we learn about how to love the self from our mom, because mom is an extension of ourself. You spent, you know, almost 10 months in the womb, in this energy. You come out, this energy of mom is familiar to you. You just spent 10 months in it. So you don't see mom, a baby does not see mom as separate. Baby sees mm. mom as me. Mom yeah. is me. Mm. And so how mom loves you or how mom and not or but and how mom loves herself and how she shows this by what you see, what you hear, what you feel from her is a lot of how you learn about how to love yourself and how to take care of what you need and want how to trust yourself, how to feel safe with yourself. Then there's dad. Dad comes over, picks you up for the first time and says, son, I love you. I'm your daddy. And to a baby, it's like, whoa, I've never felt this energy before. Because remember, baby can, can't see or understand mm. what you're saying. Yeah. Energy. Mm. And it feels this loving energy, though. But it's feeling this loving energy from something outside of themselves. And so right there in that moment, what a child connects with father is father is the heart. Father is love and relations with others. Is love from outside of me. Mm. Is, wow, something outside of me is here for me. So father also represents the ultimate father, God. Because a lot of times it's like, how do we know something is there for us? This mm. thing called universe or God. We learn that from something outside of us called our father being there for us. So all of this teaches us about love and how to love ourselves, how to parent ourselves how to have courage, right? Father represents the heart, courage, purpose, vulnerability, the willingness to show yourself to someone outside of yourself. And so the journey starts with uncovering. Well, what did you learn from mom and dad based on how they were? Mm. For me to share, my father, wonderful man, love him, still married to my mom, 40 something years. But when I was a little girl, he ran a hotel. He worked 16 hours a day. He'd leave at 6 a.m., he'd come home at 10 p.m. and do it all over again. Mm. So I didn't see my dad. And so the impact on me was like, I didn't have a connection with anything outside. Like, like to me, I felt like I don't matter, I'm invisible. And it's not like he was never there, but so little mm. that it affected me. I wanted more, I needed more. We yeah. all do. We need mm. our father to be there for us, to teach us about how to love and relate with others. So the, the, there was a lot of um, beliefs, limiting beliefs that form your script that got imprinted in my being at that age. You don't matter, you're invisible. Men will always put something else first. Be okay with what you get. Do whatever you can to please dad. So do whatever mm. you can to please others. Right? So, so you have to uncover what's the script that you inherited? What is the script that you learned first? And wow. get to the root 
of it all is what I guide people to. So it's like, hey, we're going to uncover the weeds that are in your garden, but then we got to get to the root of it. So some of it is programmed just on a subconscious level. It's mm -hmm. just like things that you saw mom do. For example, mom was always busy running around taking care of things. She never sat down. So you might've learned to always keep busy, have to accomplish and do things. Mm. But then there's the beliefs, the limiting beliefs that came from incidences in your childhood. I call them incidences. They could be traumas, right? Traumatic experiences, some of which might've been extremely traumatizing, like mom and dad separating, right? Getting a divorce, suddenly they're in separate houses. And some of it, as an adult looking back, you might say, oh, that was no big deal. But to a three-year-old, mom showing up 20 minutes late to pick them up, triggered abandonment and it mm. was the worst thing that could happen right yeah and so from those experiences there's emotions that happened that didn't get fully expressed because you needed to survive in that moment. yeah and those experiences created a part of your identity so they're not just beliefs like keep busy always do things but it's literally become who you think you are it's so deeply ingrained in your script that it's part of your character. You live inside of, this is one of your ways to survive. And so these beliefs are deeply ingrained, not only in the subconscious, but in the energetic body, in the emotional body. Now our emotions mm -hmm. are just energy in motion. And when those emotions aren't fully moved through or expressed the way that they wanted to maybe you really wanted to cry but dad was like you knew if you cried dad would yell at you or slap you across the face and you couldn't and so you decided to be tough like instead right and so when you start to uncover what that little boy or little girl actually really needed to say in that moment you get to finally bring healing to that part and mm -hmm. complete it and so things are stored on a deep rooted level subconsciously, but also in our body, in our energetic body. And, and people listening may say, but I don't remember much from my childhood. Yeah, because you're trying to remember it here. Mm. And what I can tell you is that the body keeps the score. The cellular memory is there. And there's processes that it takes to feel safe enough in the body again to connect to what you're feeling and what buried emotions are there and sensations are there but at, i could tell you time and time again when i work with people they don't remember then i help them connect into their body and suddenly the memory emerges something that they haven't thought about and probably since it happened they're like wow I don't know where that memory suddenly came from. It's mm. there. It's in there. It's in your cellular memory. It's in, it, 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 it's in the body. And it's so important to move through so that we feel free because though the, it's blocking the flow of love. It's blocking your connection to love yourself and to know that you're worthy of love with other people. And sometimes it's creating tension and, and, and stress in the body. You know, our hips, you know, those of you that do yoga and can't sit in lotus pose, it's because most of trauma, emotional uh, trauma from childhood, a lot of times is held in our psoas, in our hips, and we can't open that. That was me as well. For most of my life, in my hips, it was like as if there was this tight, ball that was really hot and on fire mm. and i would feel it burning from now and then and i would just kind of i would hit it just like have that pain go away and i lived like this and i remember being this was just like five years ago i was dating a chiropractor because I, I thought oh this is just normal this is the way it is and he said to me no no that's that's not <laughs> that's just like stored emotions that are blocked in there and so as I delved into doing the emotional release work and, and tension and trauma release work that I now teach, I released all that. I could sit in lotus pose, no problem. I have no pain, nothing there. But that's just more proof 
that the body does hold on to these things. The memory, is, the cellular memory is there. The healing needs to be not just on a cognitive level, like let's understand things from reading a book or being in a workshop, but on a body, on a on a energetic, emotional level. And mm. then there needs to be connection to both body mind connection all of it so that's the process of really getting to uncover what's in your script who's like what's in your garden what are the weeds that are there and having the right tools to get to the root of it and clear it and then replace it with something new because if you edit a script and you don't replace it with something new all you could do is keep acting the way that you've always acted and you're going to end up defaulting back and reinforcing the old. And so the importance of replacing it and then taking action in alignment with it. Wow. That was deep. And thank you for <laughs> blowing my mind uh, because now I'm feeling a little dizzy actually. Um, but yeah, no, wow. That was unbelievable seriously like the 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 way you describe you know how ba baby sends energy and you know how mom is the extension of you and dad is represents relationship with other people outside of you and then how that manifests into your older life etc wow that's all i can say like i've never heard anybody describe it that way um certainly i never thought of it that way but that is so deep and and, and so powerful i absolutely love it like People in the audience, if you're not sitting there getting dizzy, I don't know what you, where you've been. You need to be listening because this was absolutely awesome. <laughs> it really was. And wow. Rewind. <laughs> rewind. Yeah. I know it was a lot to like take in, so, mm. but it, it was the important stuff that I really want people to get the depth of it. There's a lot yeah. of times when I can meet someone and they can tell me what they're challenged with and I know if it's a mother learning or a father learning, meaning a dysfunctional learning that they got and we can start there and delve into clearing that out so they, you know, whether it's they don't take care, uh, they know they should eat better, they know they should exercise, they know they shouldn't smoke, but yet they do, all those things. Mm. And it's usually got to some, some, some connection, some mother wounding. You know, or they're challenged with connecting with others, being vulnerable, having a loving relationship with other people, whether it's friend or partner, um, or they, they can't uh, allow themselves to just be, they, they feel like they don't trust anyone outside of themselves, um, or they need courage or purpose, they're lost, they don't know what their life purpose is, that's usually connected to something related to father. Mm. And so uncovering what you learned getting the new learning which then gives them access to knowing how to parent themselves yeah you know, like a garden if any of you listening have ever had a garden or i'm sure you can get this you don't just tend to a garden once and then say okay bye it's forever as long as you want that garden taking care of you you need to take care of it so as long mm -hmm. as you're alive you need to tend to yourself and so having the right learning to know how to continue to mother yourself, to father yourself, to give yourself what you need that you would have loved to have always gotten from mom and dad when they were responsible for you. But the reality of it is that they're no longer responsible. Their job is done. Most likely most of the people listening to this right now are uh, you know, older than teenagers. And um, so it, it's for us to get the right learning and the right tools to know how to continue to tend to ourselves, to give ourselves the love that we need to, the love that mom and dad should have given us fully. Mm. And so that's where it ties back to self-love. Like what is it to love thyself? And once yeah. you have that and you're embodying that, you're really able to attract the right partner. Mm. To, to, to instead of attracting for me for years I was attracting men that were emotionally unavailable and sometimes even physically unavailable mm. and that's because that was my father and so I was looking to heal that with them I was looking for the love to bring love to that area through that person but they just kept reinforcing it I was just handing them that role in the script of my movie to play. And now my partner 
is in the best ways, like my dad, like, oh my God, their obsession with soccer, <laughs> is, you know, in, in, in the greatest ways he is, uh, but he's completely emotionally available, physically mm. available. Phones are off. We, we adventure together every weekend. And I would have never attracted someone like that until I healed this part myself, until I learned to love this part myself. So it all ties back to where people are seeking that love externally. What the, a lot of times it's not love that they're seeking. It's healing. And you need to love and heal that yourself. Mm. And come from a place of love. Are you going to be perfect? No. Is your partner going to be perfect? No. We are perfectly imperfect. And your person is someone that you're going to be able to unconditionally love and see them and support them and constantly becoming and growing to the better and better and best version of themselves. But the foundation of it is already love. Yeah. Like you have your garden and he has his. And when you come or she, right. And when you come together, you create a garden together, but all you can bring to that garden is what's in yours. Mm. So you are you bringing flowers? Now you bring weeds and then expecting your partner to solve all your problems. I mean, how many of us have experienced that? The unhealthy codependent relationship. Yeah. There, yeah. So anyway, I could go on and on and rant on this. <laughs> no, it, it's great. It's, it, it's awesome. I mean, you know, everything you shared so far, it's been absolutely mind blowing. And, and I'm sure people in the audience have found lots of uh, value in it. I know I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm starting to think things over and I'm like, huh, that makes a lot of sense. Now I know what I need to do differently next time. <laughs> so yeah. Great. I'm glad I gave you some clarity and peace of mind. Yes. Yeah. And knowing what to do on a cognitive level is one thing, mm. but being able to actually uh, move forward with that because you're embodying the new learning is another thing. And so that's something else that people are challenged with. Cause, and you see this when people read all these different books or listen to podcasts and I'm not saying don't do either. They're great, but more knowledge isn't always the thing yeah. that you need mm. More learning. It's like going to the nursery and buying all the seeds for all the flowers that you want to plant in your garden, but you come back to your garden and there's no room to plant that because it's full of weeds. And so it's not so much learning more as it is unlearning first. And when you unlearn and when you clear it out, the ability then to be able to uh, learn, whether it's from a mentor or just seeing a couple and being like, huh, that's what I want. That's how it should look like. Or from a book or from a movie, there's just so much room for it because there's nothing limiting you anyway, anymore. There's nothing saying that you can't create this in your life tomorrow. There's just, hey, blank slate, what would you like? Yeah. So my, my advice to you and to everyone else is if something is in your way, get that out of the way first. Don't just think you can just flip the switch and act in a new way because a lot of times you can't because mm. it's still there yeah. and there's an area that you'll see that you have been able to i'm not saying it's not at all but usually the most deepest deepest things we can't just flip a switch and 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 become someone new it takes a lot of repetition a lot of practice and sometimes uh unlearning and uncovering what's what's been in the way wow yeah I, I it's so true um but i love the garden analogy that you use there i think that's that's a great analogy to use uh and also the whole unlearning bit because you know what a lot of the times nobody ever talks about it they're just like oh yeah you can totally do this you know today you're this but tomorrow your life can be completely different all you have to do is follow the xyz system right but the, the garden analogy is amazing. Like you have to unlearn, you have to get rid of the weeds to make room for the seeds that you want to plant in order to get the results that you want to get. Makes so much sense. And I just absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, and I, I, you know what? I, I, I would love to stay on this call 
um, and and talk to you for hours, literally hours, because I think it's it, it's just so amazing. Like everything that you talk about, it's so powerful, and I think definitely people need to hear this. But I am conscious of your time. I know you're flying off to Hawaii on a holiday really soon, um, so I'd love to maybe you know um, arrange a round two with you sometime. Absolutely, absolutely. So well, it's been a total pleasure. Totally in the flow. I think we. Uh, have given the audience enough to sit with for now and um, if anyone has any questions yeah. from hearing all this definitely comment and submit that because we can do round two and cover your questions so we'd love that yeah absolutely uh, and you know guys what did i tell you at the start i told you this is going to be an awesome conversation and and you know what we've only explored one rabbit hole and that's like you know your love life like that's the only rabbit hole we've explored today and Annette has, has got so much more to offer seriously like if we do any of the following videos i know they're going to be world class because this absolutely was i absolutely loved it Annette, if you run for president sometime let me know i'll be the first one to vote <laughs> thank you talal thank you everyone <laughs> such a pleasure and uh, yeah more to come for sure so, absolutely remember Keep calm and love yourself first. I love it. I, I think that's a really powerful message. Um, and, you know, the, the whole conversation was really powerful. So many amazing takeaways. Um, and for people in the audience, seriously, you know, you... I think you really need to listen to this one again. I'm going to be listening to this one again. And I, I say this and I absolutely mean it. This was one of the most powerful conversations I've had on the show, and I absolutely loved it. Um, Annette, your energy, your passion, it really shows, it comes out, it punches you in the face. I'm going to be black and blue tomorrow, not looking forward to that, but this has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Talal. Take care, guys. Bye yes. Bye. Well, very quickly, before you go, though, can you tell us, first of all, how can people find you and know more about you, um, and uh, how can they get in touch? Sure. Uh, so if they're interested in uh, hearing more about my work, exploring the possibility of working with me, getting some of my free guides, they can go to trainingcampforthesoul.com. And they could also follow me on Facebook, Instagram. I haven't quite tapped into using Instagram that much, but still, um, tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow may be the day that I use it more. So. <laughs> And same thing with Instagram and again, trainingcampforthesoul.com if they want to schedule time to connect with me and see how we can work together. I love it. And, and you know what? I think going to Hawaii would be the perfect time to start an Instagram account. Uh, I'd take it for the, yeah. it. Oh, you started it, it right? Okay. But, cool. Yeah, there'll be some Insta stories from Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Right. And how can we help you right now? Where do you need help right now? How can you help me right now? Mm. Uh, I'd say just keep keep doing what you're doing. Keep spreading the love. Keep spreading the messages of those of us like myself. Um, so for me, uh, yeah, sharing this on your social medias and uh, really looking at this for yourself and coming back with any questions so we can have a powerful round two. And uh, those that you feel could really benefit from my gift, my medicine, put us in touch, connect us. So I'm, I'm here to serve and bring people to love. Beautiful. I love it. Guys, uh, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing this time with us. We both came here to serve you guys and I knew this was a really powerful conversation. I absolutely loved it. There were so many takeaways. I want to know what were your biggest takeaways and definitely comment below and tell us you know, any questions you have, anything you want us to cover in round two, we'd love to hear what you guys have to say so we can cover that in round two. And again, I just want to say, make sure you share it, this conversation and other conversations with people who are close to you, people who you think need to hear these messages and can benefit from the content. And make sure you subscribe to the channel because guess what? It helps the channel grow, but it also allows me to bring on more amazing guests like Annette so we can actually learn from them, have these amazing conversations and actually accelerate our lives and with that i just want to say once again anna thank you for being here with us uh, this has been absolutely amazing guys hustle hard stay awesome and i'll catch you in the next one